Hello everyone. This video is about theories of emotions. Why we are talking about theories of emotions? Because we want to know what is the role of limbic system in emotions. How basically limbic system was evolved. How we came to know that these are the areas of limbic system. Mostly students uh, are confused what are different areas of limbic system and what is their role. So if you go through the theories of emotion first, you'll be very clear why those areas are included in limbic system. Okay, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please subscribe it because you people motivate me to make more videos and my videos are basically helping you people that I came to know. So please subscribe it. So let's get started. So limbic system is playing very important role in uh, emotions. So we should be very clear about these terms. What are emotions and what are feelings? Emotions are set of physiological responses that occur unconsciously when our brain detects certain challenging situations. These automatic physiological responses occur in both brain and body. In brain, it can be like arousal of anything, cognitive functions like attention, memory processing or decision strategies when we face something, right? In body, the changes can be endocrine changes, autonomic changes like increase in heart rate when we see something fear fearful, right? Musculoskeletal changes, right? So all those changes are emotions. But when we talk about feeling, on the other hand, feelings are the conscious perception of all those changes, though those physiological events. So emotions are unconscious expressions where feelings are conscious experiences, right? Now, time by time, which areas are basically part of limbic system? Those boundaries of limbic system have been repeatedly redefined because of advances in neuroscience. We'll go through the journey of emotion subsequently, how these areas are involved, which basically include nothing but theories of emotions. So we'll be talking about all the theories and who gave them and how the idea came in their mind. First of all, in 1890, William James, who was founder of American psychology, by giving example of seeing a bear, proposed that the conscious feeling of fear is a consequence of emotions that occur during act of running away. So normally we were thinking that we saw a bear and then we frightened and then we run away. On the other hand, James Lange, for first time, he gave a concept that we are afraid because we run, not because we saw a bear. He gave peripheral feedback theory in which he said that emotional competent stimulus processed in sensory cortex. So whenever emotional stimulus comes, it goes to sensory cortex. That information transmitted to motor cortex, which produces emotional response, which are perceived at sensory cortex and we feel feeling. So feeling came from that perception from sensory cortex. But a counter proposal offered by Cannon and Bard several years later. Cannon, for, which was the first person to describe fight and flight response, he proposed that the emotional responses and feeling occur simultaneously. In 1920, Cannon showed a transaction of brain above the level of hypothalamus, which basically separate by means of a cut the cortex and thalamus from hypothalamus. So the animal, which was cat's hair, still show emotional responses when provoked so they would they would give different emotional responses which were snarling pyloreactions so they named this behavior as sham rage they believed cortex is critical to cause behavior of basically the emotional behavior so they gave cannon bar theory in which they proposed that the sensory information is transmitted to thalamus from where it is relayed simultaneously to hypothalamus and cerebral cortex Hypothalamus basically evaluate the quality of stimulus and its descending connections to brainstem to spinal cord give rise to different emotional or physical responses, right? And thalamocortical pathway give rise to conscious feeling. So the emotional responses go simultaneously to both of the area. Cerebral cortex leads to feeling and hypothalamus leads to bodily responses. So he concluded with this that the hypothalamus play important role in emotional expressions. In 1937, James Papage extended this cannon bar theory, proposing that the signal from hypothalamus go first to anterior thalamus. 
so from hypothalamus it go to anterior thalamus so this is hypothalamus it is going to anterior thalamus right then it go to cingulate cortex where the signal from hypothalamus and sensory cortex both basically converge which account for conscious feeling right and output of which output of cingulate cortex here it is going again to hypothalamus via hippocampus okay so this is the circuit which is involved in emotion so the same circuit is called he named it as papad circuit the circuit of emotions the same is shown in the image how so from uh, hypothalamus it's going to anterior thalamus from anterior thalamus it's going to cingulate cortex from cingulate cortex it comes to hippocampus here hippocampus and that it it goes to hypothalamus right so the the whole circuit is called papad circuit but a turn point came when during that time in late 1930s henrich kluwer and paul busey removed the temporal lobe of monkey bilaterally and found a variety of disturbances like alteration in feeding habits like inedible things he took in mouth sexual behavior hypersexuality was observed and lack of concern for previously fearful objects these remarkable changes are known as kluwer busey syndrome so they concluded that some areas in temporal lobe must be responsible for these kind of behavior in 1950s lawrence westcrantz wanted to understand which region of temporal lobe was responsible for emotional changes in kluwer busey syndrome as we discussed just now that time fear has been popular emotion in neuroscience research because it is so important for survival they found it the best and convenient way to study emotion by fear conditioning now lorenz used avoidance conditioning first phase of avoidance conditioning is pavlov classical conditioning and then the animal or whatever it is learn to perform responses that successfully avoid that aversive uh, response aversive stimulus basically painful stimulus so that uh, when painful stimulus is being avoided it's called avoidance conditioning now let's see what is this first phase or paolo classical conditioning so in paolo classical conditioning an association is learned between unconditioned stimulus which is current or shock here and conditioned stimulus which is tone or any voice okay which is neutral stimulus so for conditioned stimulus it was a neutral stimulus no response on unconditioned stimulus which was a shock there was a response so association was made between two how let us see that so first of all conditioned stimulus which is a tone is presented for 10 seconds to a rat and then animal is shocked or we can say shock is given last 0.5 second during the final second of conditioned stimulus presentation so after several pairing of both the stimulus condition and unconditioned stimulus that is tone and shock simultaneously the presentation of conditioned stimulus which is tone here alone so when we present only tone alone the red was showing defensive freezing behavior and associated all the endocrine and autonomic changes have been observed okay so when here we can see in the image both the stimulus are presented so for 10 second condition stimulus was presented which is tone and then shock for last 0.5 second when pairing was done for several time only tone presentation gives the same response so he was responsive he was showing defensive behavior only for tone so the rat was having associative learning for both the stimulus So after many experiments of various areas in temporal lobe he concluded that the animal with amygdala damage fails to learn the association between conditioned stimulus and unconditioned stimulus so when there is no amygdala there was no fear response the rat was not expressing any fear when conditioned stimulus is presenting alone Maclean didn't share the Pappas idea that cingulate cortex is a sheet of feeling instead he thought of hippocampus as a part of brain where the external world 
the sensory information and internal world the medial cortex and hypothalamus allows internal signal to give weightage to stimulus and give rise to conscious feeling subsequent findings raised problem for this theory when in 1957 it was found that the damage to hippocampus produce deficit in memory consolidation are able to express emotion but damage to amygdala lead to disturbances in emotion expressions and association so they in concluded that it's not hippocampus but amygdala which is playing central role in emotional expressions